Today marks one year since the elimination of cash bail in Illinois. One of the policy's biggest supporters has been Cook County State's Attorney Kim Fox, and she joins us live. Madam State's Attorney, how are you? I'm well, Micah. How are you? Good, good. You were a big supporter. You had a lot of critics. Now a year later, what do you think about it? Uh, the sky didn't fall. Uh, <laughs> a year later, <laughs> despite... Uh, months and months of fear mongering and misinformation. Uh, we are one year out from this historic legislation that has seen uh, pretrial detention hearings be more thoughtful, be more robust. Uh, people who pose a threat to public safety are being detained. Uh, people who can go home on other conditions are going home. Crime has not gone up. People are returning to court. Um, it is. It is moving in the way that researchers, advocates, um, and others believed it would. That was one of the things that critics said, that there would be a rise in crime. In fact, as you said, it's gone down. What about people being jailed? Yeah, so there are people who are being held in custody if they pose a threat to public public safety. Um, a year ago, uh, a year and a day ago, someone charged, for example, with first degree murder, if they could write a check uh, to walk out of jail, they would. What we have seen is that people who have posed a threat, um, there are these robust hearings where if they're deemed dangerous to the public or to a, another, um, they're being held. And so the jail population is shifting from people who are just there because they are poor and maybe not a threat to people who are there because they pose a legitimate threat to public safety or are a flight risk. Do you believe where you commit a crime makes a difference, especially with this law? You know, it's a statewide law, uh, and certainly the application of it depends on, on the various uh, prosecutors and judges in each jurisdiction. But I think what the data has shown from Loyola is that across the state, uh, there has been uh, success. In fact, I read today about the chief judge of St. Clair County in downstate Illinois, who was touting the success down um, in the East St. Louis area. And so it is not just a Chicago or Cook County centric law. We are seeing prosecutors across the state uh, tout its benefits, even those who were initial detractors. How much does a judge's discretion matter in these cases? You know, a judge has the discretion, has always had the discretion to be able to determine whether or not someone would be free or previously how much money someone would have to post to, to get out. Uh, but prosecutors, we have to file a, a motion to have someone be detained. Uh, so ultimately, even to get to that decision, prosecutors have a tremendous amount of dis discretion in determining what petitions are filed to hold someone in custody. Do you find that violent offenders are being detained? Absolutely. We are finding that people who have committed violent offenses where we file a petition and we make the case um, are being detained. One area that, you know, we have seen a significant increase in detention is in the area of domestic violence. Once upon a time, uh, a year ago or so, it was very rare for someone who was charged with domestic violence uh, to be detained. Oftentimes, their own victims were being forced to pay for their bond amounts and have their assailants come back into their home with them. We've seen an increase um, in people who have been uh, charged with domestic violence uh, be detained because they pose a dangerous threat to someone within their own home. You say that jail, um, jail population has decreased, violent cr or crimes have gone down. So what difference has this law made a year later? I think the most significant difference is that we've taken cash out of the equation in determining whether or not someone poses a risk to public safety. I think most people just never understood that cash was such an arbitrary measure of whether or not someone could be released. It really was about who had access to money and not who was dangerous. As I said, we had people charged with first degree murder who might get a $100,000 bond and walk out the door. And now we've taken money as the as, as as the factor away and said, let's look at the facts of the individual case. Has this person been arrested or convicted before? Are they a flight risk? And make that hearing so that a judge can make that determination. That's the single biggest determinant is what is their history and what is the crime, not how much money do they have in their bank. Do you think that race had had an, uh, a part in this, too? Oh, absolutely. I, I think the fear mongering that led up to uh, the implementation of the Pretrial Fairness Act 
uh, was absolutely targeting around race. Now, there's a difference between policy discussions where people can disagree. We can have people disagree about the Pretrial Fairness Act. But what we saw was a deliberate misinformation campaign targeting black communities, targeting suburban communities, using fake newspapers that were covered in images of black and brown men. Um, uses of the term the purge, uh, uses of language like they're coming to your neighborhood with images of black men. That harkens back to the days of Willie Horton in 1988. Um, it was an intentional act to strike fear, and that's not a policy uh, disagreement. That was rooted in race because all of the faces that were used to scare people were the faces of black and brown people. And I refuse to believe anything other than if you need to lie and use misinformation and depict fear using the images of black men was a purposeful act. One year later, is Illinois safer or the same? Well, what I know for sure is that Crime did not go up um, in the past year. Um, we have seen a reduction in crime. We've got a long way to go. But what I can say is that the implementation of this act did not cause crime to go up, did not make us less safe. And so that is heartening to see. It's early. Uh, one year feels like a long time, but we want to look at the data, want to look at trends. Uh, but I certainly think from an, an observant measure, uh, that the data tells us that we are more safe. Cook County State's Attorney Kim Fox, thank you, ma'am. Thank you.